Well, this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have biomarkers for predicting PAD and two studies of atrial fibrillation. So to begin with, we have um, a search for biomarkers to predict development of peripheral arterial disease, a relatively novel area. Uh, certainly, we use biomarkers all the time in, in coronary disease, um, and so it's a, a, an expansion therein. And, and uh, so two markers that were looked at involved uh, oxidized phospholipids and ApoB related to LDL, as well as LP little a. And two uh, of the biomarkers were identified to predict risk with about a, a 35 to 40 percent higher risk of developing PAD with elevated oxidized phospholipid to ApoB ratio as well as LP little a. And so not that surprisingly, these are related to atherosclerosis and PAD being part of that process, but useful to have exact um, levels, et cetera, to help predict PAD. The next study looked at whether extreme exercise uh, would be an increased risk of developing atrial fibrillation. There had been some studies showing that those who exercise very regularly and a lot uh, might increase their risk of developing atrial fibrillation. And so a group did a meta-analysis of four prospective cohorts involving just under 100,000 subjects um, and found there was really no increase in the extreme high exercising group uh, as compared with uh, those who carried out regular amounts of exercise. And so that should not keep us away from uh, doing a marathon as we enter Boston Marathon season or other um, uh, extreme sports. And the number one pick uh, this week is a registry analysis to look in a real-world analysis as to how dabigatran performs as compared with warfarin. Uh, this was a paper published in Jack, where they did a two-to-one matching of about 4,900 patients treated with dabigatran and twice that number with warfarin, uh, propensity matched, and looked at outcomes. Uh, they found, uh, very consistent with the randomized trials, a lower rate of intracranial hemorrhage with both dabigatran 110 milligram twice a day dose and 150 milligram twice a day dose uh, as compared with warfarin. Also, mortality was lower uh, with each of the um, dabigatran groups. Interestingly, um, pulmonary embolism uh, was also lower. Um, and myocardial infarction was also lower, and that had been a concern that it might be higher with uh, a direct thrombin inhibitor. Um, overall stroke, that is uh, non-hemorrhagic stroke, was not significantly different um, uh, in either of the two groups, but again, intracranial hemorrhage was. And so while this is an observational study, I think uh, adds some real-world experience to see no increase in uh, bleeding as has been uh, worried about with the higher dose and actually lower rates of bleeding with the lower dose. And so reassuring real-world experience with this new oral anticoagulant. So for this week's uh, Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.